Hey, Val. How you doing, Val? Oh. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> what are you doing? Goober. <laughs> Yo. Well, I don't have any videos I can show you, so do you want to start watching it? Yes. Because, <laughs> you know, you're behind on things. So for lunch, we're for lunch we're having this delicious oxtail that my sister makes. So, so good. You boil it first in the in in uh, water with uh, salt and like a bay leaf for like 45 minutes to sort of like an coat, yeah, about like 45 minutes. And then um, to sort of like soften it because oxtail is a cheap cut and it's like the meat's like very tough. So you have to soften it and then you stick it in the oven and roast it to get all like browned and delicious um, for Jess, how long do you put it in the oven for after you? Uh, I think I only do it for 20 or 30 minutes, mm. minutes maybe today. Okay, and then it gets all like like this, and like you baste it with oil and like salt, salt and like all that, and it's just delicious. So that's what we're having for lunch today with bread. <laughs> bread and the dipping sauce. No, that's, that's oil. Not, that's oil. The dipping sauce is in the microwave. But yeah, and, and a dipping sauce. So... That's lunch. I knew he was alive. I knew it. I knew it. I never gave up hope. I never stopped believing. Journey would be so proud of me. Welcome to another week with author E. Jamie. Um, so today it is supposedly, supposedly, it is uh, about six degrees outside, but apparently with a wind chill of minus nine, I beg your pardon? I don't understand. Like, how could the wind chill be, like, so different? That's, like, almost a 10 degree difference. I... And I was all, like, because tomorrow's supposed to be, um, like, plus two. And I don't know what the wind chill's going to be, but that was sort of going to be the day that um, I was kind of planning on staying home uh, tomorrow because of, like, the weather was going to be colder and I was sort of looking forward to going out today because it was supposed to be like plus six and I hate Canadian winters I had them I had them but going to head out today on my walk you know bundle up with my layers and all that because um I have a, uh, at the evil day job, we got, a, like last year, I'm assuming they do this every year, but I only started there last year, uh, they gave us a, a Christmas uh, gift certificate, and uh, they gave it to us again this year, uh, so I wanted, and it's sort of like split in two, so there's sort of like two Christmas gift certificates, um, and I wanted to use one today at, uh, on my walk going to the thrift store, because the evil day job is at a thrift store. I work at a thrift store. Um, so wanted to go to my, go on my walk, go to the thrift store today, use up, um, one of the gift cards. Uh, I want to get... I need, because I bought my mom's Christmas present already, but I just want to get, like, a nice, like, sort of box to put it in. I want to get that. I want to get PJs. Uh, I might get a candle. I want to get a bra. And, of course, books, because 
who are we talking about? Who are we talking about here? Um, so yeah, that's sort of, and um, I was also gonna drop off uh, some donations uh, and uh, get like a gift, uh, not a gift, but a, but a uh, coupon for that because at this thrift store, when you do a donation, you get a, uh, a coupon. So I wanted to do that. So that's sort of the plan for today. Tomorrow was going to be my sort of stay at home day. Cause yesterday I was out all day at my sister's and we watched, um, some more, uh, North and South, the, um, 1980s miniseries with Patrick Swayze and James Reed and Kirstie Alley, who, uh, rest in peace, died this week of, uh, uh cancer. That's the from cancer. So, uh, RAP to her, um, even though she was ended up being not one of my favorite people because of her um, political stances on certain things and spreading of disinformation and just all around basic in ignorance about things. But as an actress, uh, she was a very, very good actress. And um, yeah, so uh, she passed away this week. Uh, so, and, um, so yeah, watched, we're almost finished, uh, book one of, uh, the North and South sort of saga. There are three different, um, miniseries in that saga, and we're almost finished the first, uh, miniseries. We also watched Stranger Things. Season four, we started. Season four, I'm about... Two episodes in, I think. And we discover that my Jim Bobby is still alive, which I always believed in. I never wanted to believe that he actually died at the end of season three. I just no. I no, I, I couldn't accept that. And he is alive and um in a Russian prison. But he's, he is going to be helped to escape by no one. No one is going to help him escape. If you understand that reference, comment down below. <laughs> um, because this man has no name. comment down below if you understand that reference um and they are still hurting my baby l at her new school they're just hurting my baby and i cannot stand for it and that angela i mean we met her and i know it's not nice to say this because she is essentially a child but i want this child to die I never thought I would say this, but I want this child to die. <laughs> um, and she's very lucky that all she got was a pair of roller skates to the face. Is all I'm saying. Um, and we meet Eddie, who is played by, I think his name is Joseph Quinn in real life. But my first ex uh, encounter with him was via the Strike uh, movies. Uh, based on the strike novels by Robert, I keep wanting to say Richard, Robert Galbraith, also known as J.K. Rowling. He was in the uh, movie Lethal White, and he played Billy in that movie, and he was just the preciousest, and I just wanted to hug him, so I was hoping that I would love him as much in Stranger Things, and I do. I love him so much love him so so much Chrissy wake up <laughs> I don't like this Chrissy wake up <laughs> that was awesome um also Chris from flowers in the attic is as is, is an ass butt in this <laughs> Mason die has joined stranger things um as uh, Chrissy's boyfriend who wants to get 
revenge on her death. Uh, and he thinks that Eddie is responsible. So he's going after Eddie. And that's not good. Because our Eddie is, interest, is innocent. And what I am very happy that my my Steve and my Nancy look they, they, I'm hope I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping that they're they're getting back together. Jonathan is a very nice boy. Very nice boy. Let's let's find some Jonathan a new nice girl. A new nice girl. Because I'm sorry. From the beginning, I wanted Nancy to stay with Steve. Because yes, Steve was a bit of an ass butt in the beginning. But he was at his core a good person. He just made some ass butt moves because he was letting those ass butt friends of his influence his decisions and his behavior but once he has once he had gotten away from them and stuck with our gang becoming their babysitter as it were <laughs> he let his true self as a good man come out and now I want him back with my girl, with my girl Nancy. So I need that floofy haired darling back with my girl Nancy. So that's sort of what we did yesterday. Um, I, what have I been reading? Where'd you go? There we go. So mm, I was. Read. I had. I finished a book that I'm going to talk about in a second, but I had started Laura Kay's Ride Wild, and I did not finish it. The it. Um, just because. Okay, this is a bit of a. This isn't an uh, age gap thing, but there's a bit of an age gap. But um, and. Uh, I think she was kidnapped, but um, she is now living as like a she's now a nanny for this guy who is like part of a motor a biker club, and uh, he's older than her, and it like that's fine, but she sort of it's an age gap thing, but I think she seems like too young the the vo like the writing voice here and like her particularly she comes off like a teenager and it talks about okay Sli slider who's like sam and his just his nickname slider does see the beautiful fun loving woman he invited into his home she doesn't come off as a woman to me she comes off as like a teenager like, I haven't read the other books in the series, but it sort of reads like, uh, she's a teenager that was saved from, like, some kind of kidnapping, and is now, like, has, like, refuge in his home as, um, a babysitter for his two kids. He's a widow. Just, like, no, she, she seems like, like a 16-year-old babysitter who's, like, living in his house, not like a, a woman. Um, so yeah, I like age gap romances, but not when the girl like sort of comes off like a teenager. Like it's different with, if it's like in the beginning, she's a teenager and like she has a crush on him or what have you, but no, like, I don't think that that's what this is. Like, I think he's, he stays, like, I think it's like, they stay the ages that they are. And because he's already like having like thoughts about her and like thinking about her like sexually, which if it was sort of like a teenage thing and then like she goes into a woman and then he starts th having like, thoughts about her, that's one thing. But 
know. Like, I don't know if she's a teenager in this uh, book, but her voice. It's... I don't know if it's just, like, new adult, as a rule, does not work for me. Because they don't end up sounding like new adult. They don't end up sounding like they're, uh, what is it, like, 19, 20, 21. They end up sounding like 13-year-old girls. Every, almost, almost every new adult that I've read. Um, I think maybe with the exception of, like, Nina Lane and her, um, bl bliss, spiral of bliss or something of bliss, spinning bliss, um, Dean West, <laughs> the Dean West books, <laughs> um, yeah, her, I think she's the only new adult that kind of really works for me because In my opinion, her heroines do not sound like 12, 13 year old girls. And most other new adult books that I've read, they do. So this did not work for me. Um, damn if that. What did work for me? You guys. You guys! This was. Without a doubt, the most comfortable book I have ever read. <laughs> Even though there are some sad moments in this book that I don't want to spoil for you. But there are, yes, there are some sad moments in this book. But there are some beautiful things that happen in this book. Oh, my precious Blueberry Gilbert boy. This boy, I love this boy so much, and just, and like, yeah, I, I annotated it and everything, and this is going on my keeper shelf. <sighs> I love this book. I love it so much. I, yes, I cannot recommend enough. If you are stressed out, if you are feeling like the last couple of years have just left you just feeling just crappy and like stressed and anxious. Pick up. I'm going to read. I want to read every Lucy Maud Montgomery book now. Everything she's written. Because her writing style in this was just beautiful. So comforting and like deliciously like just warm and i can't not praise it enough this is such good stress relief just sit in your chair with like maybe like wrapped in like a nice blanket with like your favorite cup of tea or your favorite cocoa and just sip and read and you will be more comfortable than you have ever been in your entire life. I cannot recommend enough. I'm like going through like my Goodreads and I will see, but this will definitely be among the best books that I read this year, if not the best. Um, so I finished that, loved that. Um, I am, I'm so excited because I actually have a good Audible that I am loving so much since I finished the Clanlands Almanac with uh, Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish. I am currently reading, listening to Monica McCarty's The Arrow, and I am loving it so, so much. I only have like What do I have left? I have three hours left. 
I'm, it is a sort of ward guardian and like ward romance and it's uh he's a highlander and it's the time of robert the bruce and he rescues her from these evil english soldiers uh, when she's a child and she grows up and falls in love with him and now they're like gonna get married but they're still like secrets being like kept from each other and stuff and we know that like that's yeah, but there's like three hours left and I'm loving it so much. And I'm so happy that I'm loving it because Audible has not been good to me. I think, I think Clanlands might have broken the streak, might have broken the, um, the rut. <laughs> because that was the previous one that I listened to before this and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so then I picked up and I downloaded, uh, this one, The Arrow by Monica McCarty, and I'm absolutely adoring it. Uh, in paperback, what I'm reading right now, after I DNF'd a ride, ride wild, I am mm, halfway through, but not really, uh, The Feminist Papers, and it's a series of essays from different uh, female writers or, or writers over the year. I think there's like one male writer, John Stewart Mill, but um, just different like essays on feminism by people like Abigail Adams, John Adams' wife, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, who her vindication on the rights of women did not work for me, um, Susan B. Anthony, um, Virginia Woolf, uh, Simone de Beauvoir, uh, and just different um, essays on feminism. And um, I'm liking some more than others. And um, so yeah, it's sort of, I'm not like thoroughly like reading it, but I'll like read a bit of like each one sort of as I go along. And if I, if I find that like their style is like not grabbing me or if they're sort of like Mary Wollstonecraft who makes the same point over and over, um, I'll, I'll, I'll skip them and uh, just go to the next per next uh, essay. And um, yeah, so I'm liking some more than uh, others. I really liked Abigail Adams, um, and hers was more like letters to pe to people, <laughs> and letters like to her husband, um, uh, with like feminist sort of bent to them. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm reading right now. I will be heading out now. Excuse me, on my walk. Um, hopefully, it won't be too too cold, but I'm gonna get my sweater and um, my coat and my scarf and all the layer stuff and I will show you what I get when I come back and I'm um, going to be editing my uh, book haul vlog uh, and hopefully have that up for you in the next few days. Um, I will be picking the winner for the uh, annotated bronze horseman that uh, I mentioned. I ended up offering it to uh, this Bronze Horseman group that I'm in, and they really, like, the response was really, really good. Uh, a lot of people want it, so I'll be doing a draw for that uh, later today. And, um, yeah, I, I, so eventually, I don't know, maybe I'll um, annotate uh, Outland, Outlander and give that away, too, maybe. Yeah, so I'm going to head out now, and I will show you guys what I get when I come back. Such a good thrift haul, y'all. I will start by saying that thanks to the uh, employee holiday gift certificate, which you can use it twice, though I used it only once because I want to save second one for some other time. So thanks to the employee holiday gift certificate. Thanks to the employee holiday discount that we're getting for the month of December, which is um, the way that the employee discount usually works is uh, for like books and that kind of stuff, you get 50% off. For other stuff, it's sort of like a mix between like 20-30%. But for the month of December, for the whole month, Everything you get, 50% off. 
So, holiday gift card, a gift certificate, holiday discount. This haul that I am about to show you, total $11. I am on such a high right now that, like, I'm not, not much of, like, a shopping, like, person. Not like not counting like books, because we all know what you know who you're subscribed to. <laughs> but in general, I am not much of a like shopping person. I am not one of those people who like you hear about people who are like addicted to shopping and then like they get a, they get a high from shopping or whatever. I am not that person. Today, I got such a high <laughs> from this shopping haul. Let me just show you. First of all, first of all, we have this Yankee Candle. It's a chocolate layer cake that, like, um, here in Canada, we're not, like, big, like, Yankee Candle people. Like, we're Bath and Body Works Candle people. <laughs> but, you know, if it, we, we are aware that Yankee Candle exists. So we have a, some of that. Found this one, and it's chocolate layer cake. And I'm not even bringing it to my nose. And it just it smells so good. It smells like a chocolate layer cake. So uh, I'm gonna see about like have the plug in that I got from wa uh, a wallflower plug in from Bath and Body Works um a while ago, a few weeks ago. Took that out. I'm gonna take that out, and I'm gonna light this. And oh my god. Smells so good, and hopefully it'll be. I'm not sure about Yankee Candles because I've never had one, but hopefully the the smell will transfer when it's lit. Because some candles, it smells great, like just like in the jar, or whatever. But then when you light it, there's like no smell. There's like no smell, sort of at all. So hopefully we'll we'll see how this goes. Then I got. Uh, two, I guess you can say two PJs, because I got a PJ set, and I got a nightgown. PJ set was this adorable top and bottom that is just so cute. So, so cute. Got that and that, and I got... A nightgown, because I haven't had a nightgown in a while, and I and I miss sort of the comfort of a nightgown. And that is the nightgown. Does it go? I'll show you how long it is. There we go. So yeah, that's the nightgown, and it looks so cozy and just pretty, and it's got like pretty little little light blue and brown flowers. So cute. Um, I got a tin to, because I want to put, like, my mom's gift, like, in, in, like, a nice tin to, um, ship it to her, because she's in my data now. She's not here anymore. She's in my data. And so I'm going to put her gift, um, in this and, uh, wrap it and ship it over there. And hopefully it'll get there before, you know, January. <laughs> and got a new bra because you know can't ever have too many it's wrong size there you go it's pretty and i wanted to make sure that it was like a neutral color that so that you can wear it with uh, anything there's that and um they had like a bunch of those um bags that they usually have against the walls and stuff and uh they had like a bunch with like uh, Christmas cards and stuff. And I am out of Christmas cards, so I needed to buy more. And so I got this bag of ones. And back there. And now to the books. To the books! This one is called uh, Seven Sun. Seventh Son by Joseph Delaney, and apparently they made a movie out of it. Uh, and it's 
books one and two in the Last Apprentice series. And I'm always on the, like, again, like, I'm not a big fantasy person, but I'm always on the lookout for a fantasy series that I can get into uh, that is going to sort of grab me. And this one's apparently going to be a movie with, oh, hello. We have Jeff Bridges, Ben Barnes, Alicia Vic Vikander. I know who that is. Uh, Kit Harrington. Hello, Jon Snow. Olivia Williams, Jamin Hansu, Julian Moore, oh, lots of people. I have, when did this come out? Because, oh, and it's like a YA. When did this came out? 2004? 2005. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think 2000, the first book came 2004. Second book came out in 2005. Um, yeah, so very much looking forward to that. I was looking for um, the next, well, I have the next uh, Anne of Green Gables. I have Av Anne of Avonlea, but I was looking for like more in that series. I was also looking for the DVDs of the Anne of Green Gables series, not Anne with an E. We talked about that. We're not going to talk about that anymore. The Anne of Green Gables with Megan follows. <laughs> I'm not going to go on a whole rant about Gilbert from Anne with an E. Not going to do it. But I didn't find it. But I did find uh, Emily of New Moon by the same author, Lucy Maud Montgomery. Now, um, I know people who have read this and they said that it's, it's wonderful. They love it and everything. But Anne of Green Gables is sort of seen as, that series is sort of seen as her... Lucy Maud Montgomery's kind of crowning achievement. Like, uh, J.R. Tolkien um, wrote, like, other things besides the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but the Lord of the Rings trilogy is sort of seen as his crowning achievement. Um, but I am very, very, I'm just, I'm just very happy to get more from this author and get, like, immersed into like her writing style. I just want to gorge myself on her writing style. Uh, Anne of New Moon, excuse me, Anne of New Moon. <laughs> Emily of New Moon, who, which I believe was also made into a uh, CBC series. Um, but yeah, I'd love to get Anne of Green Gables series with uh, Megan Follows and Jonathan Crombie. Next, we have 10,000 Lovers by Edith Ravel. And that's just a beautiful cover. And it's just briefly, it's a um, young girl named Lily, uh, I believe, in Israel. And uh, uh, an Ami, who is an army interrogator. And it's a love story. So, and that cover is just beautiful. Beautiful. And next I have uh, Alice Monroe, The Love of a Good Woman, and it, it is a short story collection. And I, I've always been interested in, like, particularly recently, looking into her stories. Because I keep, like, passing, like, I know that she is, you know, she's classic, classic Canadian literature. And there's just something about, like, I, and I would, like, thrift, like, look through, kind of, like, flip through her books whenever, like, I saw them. And just the, I don't know, the, 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 this, the vibe of the stories and, like, just sort of, like, the way that they're, like, described and stuff. Um, kind of interests me. Like, they don't seem like the typical dry, classic um, Canadian literature, like Robertson Davies and Fifth Business and just all oh, that. That book was the bane of my existence in English class. Like, I can't even. Like, I just. That book was boring as. 
Like, dude throws a snowball, feels guilty about it. 500 pages. <laughs> it felt like 500 pages. Maybe it wasn't. But oh my god. Why? Why were we made to. Re mm -hmm. But yeah, always like Alice, and Alice Monroe. I would have enjoyed, I think, studying her works in high school. But we didn't. We didn't get Alice Monroe. I think we might have touched on Margaret Atwood, I think. But no, it was mostly. Who wrote, um, who wrote the Stone Angel? I know it was a woman that wrote the Stone Angel. I'm 90% sure it was a woman. But I think that was the only female story that I, no, there was the lottery by, uh, I think it was Shirley Jackson. I really liked that one. But yeah, class, classic literature. I always gravitated towards female writers. So, looking very looking forward to reading the short stories in here. I hope that I'm not disappointed. Uh, next we have Tweets Frances by Irene or Irene Nemirovsky. And I have heard a lot about this. I've heard a lot about this um, book. And it's set like during World War II. And I think I, I believe I believe that the author she, did she get to finish? I think she finished it. She finished this book and it came out. But then in uh, 1942, she was um, arrested by the Nazis and uh, she died in Auschwitz. So that's very sad. But very looking forward to this one. You know how I love my World War II fiction. And that, my ladies and gentlemen, entire hall. $11.39. Such a high from that. I got such a high. I got twelve fifty off with the uh, half of my uh, holiday gift certificate. I got $22.75 off with my holiday employee discount. Ma'am. Yes, so very, very happy about that. So um, I'm going to spend the rest of the day being giddy <laughs> about that. Um, and going to clean up around here. Weather-wise, it was not bad. It was not bad. I expected it to be worse the way they were talking about, like a minus nine wind chill or whatever, but no, with like with the shirt, sweater, coat, pants, you're you're comfortable. You're fine. Um and uh going to edit my book haul. And going to pick the winner of the uh annotated copy of the bronze horseman for my bronze horseman group on Facebook um, and sort of just take it easy for the rest of the day. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to stay home tomorrow. Oh, and I took the bus, like I walked there and it was nice and it was lovely, sun's out, it's beautiful, but I took the bus home because uh, all that stuff was like a little heavy for me to carry on the way back, so I took the bus home. Um, I think tomorrow, I'm tempted, I'm tempted, but to go out and maybe like discover a new free library, free little library, but I also want to uh, record my next uh, speed dating my TBR vlog, so I'm 90% sure that I'm going to just stay home and record that and edit last week's vlog because like yeah i'm gonna have like a lot of stuff to do tomorrow so i think i'm gonna be good and stay home um 
because I was out all day with my sister yesterday and I wanted to go shopping today. Um, so tomorrow, yeah, I think I'm just gonna stay home and be good and do some stuff. Um, yep, yeah, so that's gonna be the plan. Oh, and excuse me, I got another cheese Danish. They only had one at the uh, cafe that's next to me, but I got cheese Danish for um for later with uh, some tea, which um yeah. So that's our plan for the rest of the day. I'm gonna take it easy. Uh, get some editing done right now, and I will talk to you guys later. So today I'll be staying at home because uh, it's like minus six or whatever with the wind chill and I, I don't want to deal with um, wind chills today um, because I just have uh, some filming and stuff to do at home. So I figured uh, wind chills is a good enough excuse. <laughs> For me to stay at home today um, before I go back to work tomorrow. So, just making my coffee. And um, so today I will be filming my uh, speed dating, my TBR episode three. And um, here's a little sneak peek of the books that I will be looking at so I will do that like so and um so if you want to check that video out when it uh goes up it'll probably be up by the time uh this gets uh uploaded um yeah I'm I I enjoy doing the uh those uh videos um I've enjoyed doing the, the first two and uh I'm looking forward to continuing that series so, um, I'm reading, I've been reading, uh, The Feminist Papers, and it's a collection of essays on, uh, feminism, and I've enjoyed, um, some more than others. I have, like, a few, uh, favorites, and it's sort, like, I'm almost, I'm almost finished it, but it's sort of, like, if I'm if I start like reading one and it's not like really like grabbing me or I don't really agree with what the person is talking about, then I just sort of skip it and go to the next one. So I'm sort of like bouncing along. Um, I think my favorite was the first one that I read by Abigail. She, one favorite was the first one that I read by Abigail Adams. Um, then. Then it was um, Francis Wright was good. Emily Collins liked her too. I really liked Frederick Engel. There, there Engels. There's a few, uh, a few men in here, but um, his uh, his essay on the origin of the family and how. Uh, the history of the family and marriage and how that has been sort of perverted to kind of like subjugate women and, and keep them down and keep sort of women, you know, like a woman's place is in the kitchen, that kind of thing. And sort of like the history of that. Um, I, I really liked that one, his, his uh, essay there. Um, and... The next one was um, August Bebel, uh, Women and Socialism. Uh, liked it for the most part. Um, and now I'm about to start Emma Goldman's The Tragedy of Woman's Emancipation. That's the one that I'm about to start reading. We shall see how that goes. And um, yeah, I'm almost finished it. Um, I was debating whether to jump right into Anne of Avonlea as soon as I finished that. But I have this little book of poetry here, uh, Keats's poetry, and um, I keep like sort of like bouncing around it and like wanting to like 
read it and like get to it and just sort of like because I I don't mostly read I don't usually read poetry my favorite poet is uh, Pablo Neruda who I have a biography on in there and um, but I've read like a, li a little bit of Keats like hit here and there and uh, it's seems like really really pretty so and it'll be like a quick sort of read nothing really uh, to invest I think too much and um, I think maybe I want to do that before I jump into uh, Anne of Avonlea because I want to make <laughs> the Lucy Maud Montgomery books uh, last as long as I can before I run out of them so I'm a delayed gratification girl my sister is the complete opposite. If she wants something, she wants it now. She wants to gorge on all, all of it now. Um, and uh, me, I want to make things last as long as possible. <laughs> so uh, I think I might check out Keats' poetry after I finish the feminist papers. Um, yeah, so going to uh, take a shower right now. Uh, then I'm going to film my speed dating, my TBR episode three. Um... For lunch, I think we're going to do salmon and mashed potatoes. That's sort of what I'm in the mood for. It's kind of like gray and cold outside, so I need <clears throat> I need some um, sort of comfort food and starch and like carbohydrate. So <laughs> that's sort of what I'm craving right now. Um, and... Then I'm going to sort of organize, I'm going to organize sort of like that shelf a little bit and like fill it up a bit more with uh, some uh, books that uh, are sort of like on the, on the, I'm starting like a pile on the ground in front of it because I haven't had room, but now I have a little bit more room. So I'm going to, maybe I'll film a little smidge of that. Um, yeah, so that's going to be the plan for today. Um, oh, I picked uh, the winner for the uh, annotated, my annotated copy of the Bronze Horseman. So, um, done that. Now I'm just waiting for them to contact me so that I can get their mailing address and send it out. Um, did uh, look, gonna do some online shopping. Or I have to buy for my nephew. Uh, kind of figuring out what I want to get for him because I got for my niece already, got for my sister's sister, and um, so now for I just have to get for him now. So that's sort of what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day. Um, yeah, so I will talk to you guys later.